Good boy. Duffster. How are you, man? Good. Is my uh, screen sharing working? You should, yes, you should see, see the... See in the CFTC meeting. Perfect, perfect. I think I want to pause share. Yeah. Love and all of the excitement about Bluefin and all of that. Awesome to see it. Those kids are running themselves now. They just, they just do stuff without me. It's like fantastic. And uh, one of them just got an internship at Chain Guard and is like so happy right now. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm testing that. So like a summer crow thing, or was it actually like? No, just a random, job? random guys like man, I need a job and. Kirkland and Chingar is like, I need interns. And I was like, yeah, wow. yeah I got a, a bunch of them are applying for uh, Zero to Merge. That's like Taylor's yeah, yeah. Uh, onboarding cool. program. And then, you know, if I see success there, I know it's not a theory any longer. And then, it. yeah. Very, very cool. How's your kiddo? Pretty good playing soccer. How's yours? Doing well, reading everything. Yeah. Having a wonderful time. Mm. Are you at a conference? <laughs> kind of. I'm at an internal conference. Um, oh, okay. So Isabella does this thing where they like take a particular vertical or a particular group of folks who are working on a similar thing and they take them all to one place. And so I'm in Washington, D.C. with the customer success team this week. Oh, that's amazing. Right. Yeah, it's neat because it's so remote, right? Like it's so remote first as a company that, like, you know, it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to remember sometimes that you work with other people. You know, like, and yeah, being in one yeah. place with them is a great is a great you know opportunity to kind of reconnect and get yeah. back in the game. I hear that. All right, so you're attending here, so I'm going to mark you bold. Amy's, Amy's having some plumbing issues in her house, so. That can, I mean, I hope it's like just water. Yeah. What are you doing? Let's see if this works. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, that works. Hello, Kevin. There is a very weird static noise. Is that me? Hold on. It might be me. Can you can you mute for a second, Duffy, and we'll figure it out. Oh yeah. It's, it's Duffy. It's Duffy. Computer friends. I'm trying to find like a headset to travel with that has like a dedicated mic that isn't this huge bulky thing that I could just keep in my bag. But that that doesn't uh mod mic i like the shock thing it actually works pretty well but i have to remember to bring it with me all right i'm just gonna test the sharing real quick that's still looking good for everyone yep all right i know we're early we got a while still yeah. Ricardo's it's nice. Here. I'm taking attendance. Oh, okay, good. Okay. I was gonna say it's it's nice to see all the like emails with updates going around. I love that. And then the discussion updates on the TOC email <laughs> this morning. Oh, Emily's here. I gotta bolt her. I mean, you don't have to. I can pretend I'm not here.
And we have new TOC members too on the call. Yeah. This is exciting. Hey, Kevin. All right, let's see. We got more time. All right, everyone, we're going to give it some more time. We like to see about 12 to 15 participants before we get started. Um, so we'll wait a few more minutes. Looks like we're starting to get more folks. Um, I see Ricardo, I see Duffy, I see Lynn, I see Kevin. All right, I'm going to wait one more minute before we get started. I want to make sure we can get as many TFC members in as we can. Hey, good morning, everybody. I just sent a chat message. There is a bot, read.ai is monitoring us. Should we stop it? Yeah, that needs to be disabled. George, is that something you can do? I don't know, but I'll try to figure it out. Okay. Thanks. Looks like it's a friendly Zoom helper, potentially. Yep. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Today is February 6th, and this is the first TOC meeting of the month. We have our tag leads and leadership team here. Uh, next slide, please. And if you've made it, um, you are going to comply with the Linux Foundation's antitrust policy notice. I'm not going to read it verbatim, um, but if you do have any questions, it's also available on the linuxfoundation.org website forward slash antitrust policy. Next slide. You're here, so you understand the meeting logistics. If you have any questions, meeting minutes were sent out prior to the meeting. Zoom information is there. Next slide. Uh, members present today. Next. We won't be making any decisions, so we won't necessarily need um, quorum. So current TOC work. Um, TOC members that are currently sponsoring projects um, do you have any updates on them? Ricardo? I have four. I'm, I'm a bit late on the open cost, but I'm picking it up again uh, this week. So I hope to make progress. Okay. And um, I've been reached out by the open yard as well. So I'll try to also pick that one up again. Okay. for the delays there. It's all right. So you've got open your and open cost. Um, Cube OVM will need to get a new sponsor. Um, I know Artifact Hub is still in due diligence. I don't see Dave on the call. Um, I so Falco is still going through um licensing exceptions. Pixies uh. Due diligence has been kicked off. Any other TOC members with a status update? 
Katie, I see that you're looking to get to cert manager. Yes, um, I had the main team switch and go to me a few uh, a few times. Uh, now that my TSC role has been extended, I'm able to pick that up. So that, that's an, on my agenda. I'm going to assign uh, the due diligence to myself this week <laughs> because I'm at the airport now. So I shall do it once I have my laptop. All right. Back our licensing thing finally went through. Um, still waiting on. I think we're pretty far along. We've got a ton of interviews as far as I know. So we're really progressing there. Okay. Um, I think that is all the moving levels updates. We do have several PRs that are open on the repo. Um, that just need two reviewers. Um. So TSD members, if you get a chance, if you could take a look at those open PRs. I know several of them um, we have folks assigned, but hopefully we can get some of those merged soon. All right. George, if you could open the discussion for the 12.05. So one of the intents, um, so one of the things that we talked about last year at the TOC and TAG meeting during KubeCon is kind of like, what is the intent of the tags we have we've talked to you all we've been collecting a lot of feedback on like your health and what your workload is um, and one of the questions that we had was are the is the work that the tags are being asked to do the work that's within the charter do we need to make changes to what are the goals and objectives of the tag how they engage with projects how they engage with adopters but we wanted to understand kind of a little bit of the current state um, several tags have a lot of working groups within them um, they have a lot of work that needs to happen um, but they may not necessarily have all the contributors for it and some other tags are, are a little bit more narrowly scoped. They're focusing more specifically on project engagements, providing recommendations within the domain. Some of our tags are also um, developing papers to help advance some of these technical domain concepts within industry. Um, so what we put together is the discussion on the TOC repo to try to understand a little bit more around this. Now, Rian uh, has gone through all of the tag charters and kind of done an evaluation and a comparison between um, the deltas between the charters where there's commonality between them, but that doesn't necessarily cover the technical content of what it is that the tags do. So we've had a lot of discussion on here and I want to thank everybody for participating in that because it's been incredible. Uh, we, we've gotten a lot of feedback. So I wanted to kind of open the floor to folks um, and understand probably from each tag, if I could have each um, tag chair or technical lead kind of talk through a little bit more of their perspective on this, because the TOC is going to um, be meeting offsite to talk through tags. And we want to collect as much of your feedback and your insights as we can so that we can make informed decisions moving forward uh, that consider the impact to the tags and the impact to the projects. So is there any tag lead or chair that would like to start? Uh, I'm happy to go if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Alex. Um, so I I wrote this up in the issue only just an hour ago or so. Um, so I don't, don't expect anybody to have had the time to read it yet. But I tried to um put in. I went through the different tags and kind of saw the commonality because at the end of the day, we all started with one operating model and one charter, which we then kind of adapted and, and added more details to. Um, so especially if we're going to rationalize the charters, it kind of makes sense to, to, to define what's common between them and then kind of define what's specific to particular tags. So I kind of said, look, what are the things that a tag should actually do um, uh, in, 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 in all cases? Um, and in all cases, a tag is put in place to help scale out the TOC by adding particular expertise or particular function, right? That the that the TOC needs to uh, to to deal with the influx of projects and the size of the community as it grow continues to grow. Um, there's obviously an educational element to this, where nearly all of the tags are producing white papers either directly or in working groups 
um, to to help with the adoption of cloud native in the community, and I think that's important. Uh, and it also is, I think, one of the primary ways that sort of new people in the tag help to contribute and get started. Um, in line with the scaling uh, issue, hopefully the tags are there to help with the project lifecycle and helping provide input on uh, you know, the reviews, the graduation processes and, and the annual reviews of project health and things like that. Um, in many cases, in fact, I think all of the tags in one way or another collaborate with, with other groups and, you know, either with Kubernetes SIGs or other working groups or other foundations at where there are commonalities or, or overlapping um, uh, work uh, in there. And I think I think acting as a focal point to to connect uh, both uh, people and projects is really really useful. Um, I think the other tag responsibilities that that we're that that need to be that that we kind of focus on are the ones which are specific to the tags. So certain tags have very specific functions, like tag security does security assessments, for example or you know tag uh, contributor strategy um, has very specific functions within within the community which are not generic and, and don't apply to to all of the tags um, but i think also and 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 here we may have an opportunity to kind of rationalize um, a lot of those special functions are sometimes done by working groups and some of those working groups are extremely long running and are there just to define a particular function so, you know, we may, there may be an opportunity here to kind of say, this is actually, um, this is actually a responsibility of the tag and we may want to, um, and where the tag and the co-chairs, you know, maintain a level of, of governance over that function that way. Um, I also think it's important to say what we're not, right? So we're in no way project governance. We may help, contribute, guide, help, et, what, et cetera, but we're, we, we don't do governance for projects. Um, we don't make decisions. The TOC makes decisions. We make recommendations to the TOC. Um, and we do not king make. Like it's very, very tempting for tanks to recommend one thing over another. And we must never, ever, ever do that. Um, I did list a couple of gray areas which i think are are fuzzy and not well defined across each of the tags so some of the tags are loosely involved in helping to influence or define standards um i'm not sure if this is if this is something we should do uh sometimes i guess it's a help like you know the work that was done with open telemetry and things like that sometimes it's a very, very fine line, you know, and we can easily become king making. Um, I think that merits some discussion. Um, also, I also think that, you know, we, that some of the tags act as a focus for some of the um, incubated or graduated projects where, you know, they're more proactive in, in uh, maintaining site of the project, whereas other tags are more reactionary in this space. So, and, and, and maybe this needs to be defined a little better. Um, I listed I listed some of the roles. I think co-chairs and tech leads are very well understood, but the more generic roles, um, like you know, the 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 there are there are a ton of tag specific roles which are less well understood, and maybe we should do more about uh, making those common and better understood across the tags. Um, and I think we need to fortify the TOC liaison role uh, and make it a bit more official and a bit more formal, um, such that, you know, if we want to, in the future, provide tags, uh, you know, delegate more responsibility to tags in any way, then then the oversight role of the of the TOC liaison is, is even more important. Um, and I think that's kind of... Um, that's that's a little bit in one of those gray areas today. You know, the, the TOC liaison is actually not particularly well defined in any of the charters. It's sort of, sort of something that happened afterwards. Um, 
So I also listed a couple of things where we could consider a bunch of changes here. Um, you know, so where we have, for example, very long running working groups, um, we may want to define those as a role of the tag rather than a role of the working group so that the chairs actually maintain some level of governance on that. Um, we probably need to formalize the flexibility on the term limits for tag members because many tags have this challenge uh, and it's not going to go away. So, you know, it kind of makes a mockery of the charter if, if we're not following it. Um, we, we, you know, like I mentioned, we may want to um, think about how we delegate, how the TOC delegates more responsibility, assuming there's the right oversight to the tags. So if the, if the, if the tags are going to be there to help the TOC scale, um, you know, maybe we should be more bold and more forthright in how we do that. Um, and, you know, in relation to that delegation, you know, do we, do we empower the tags to have a more formal role in the project qualification and review? So for example, you know, if there's information around collecting uh, data points on IP policy, roadmap, governance, etc. Like that, that seems to be like a huge bottleneck in the TOC today uh, when it comes to, you know, all of the various reviews and annual reviews and health reviews and whatever else. And if those data points are delegated, you know, those are the sorts of things we can, we can maybe uh, help scale the TOC and get them to do other things. So that, that was a bit of a brain dump. Sorry, there was a lot there. <laughs> no, it it was well articulated and broken out. And I definitely appreciate kind of defining those gray areas, I think is where a lot of um, the TUC and some of the tag struggle is like, some of them are doing it, some of them aren't. It's not really explicit. Should we be doing it? Should we not be doing it? But I like the way that this is constructed and presenting that space. Kathy. Yeah, I think I like you know. Thanks, thank you very much, Alex. I like you know what you you know put in here. It's really a very comprehensive list and very good. Um, so I think I would like to add one more on the you know the tax uh, responsibility. Um, so uh, in addition to identify the um, overlaps, you work with other community, right? Or other tax to identify to make sure there is no no not much overlap. Also, if you can work, you know, tag can work with you know related tags or community to identify the functionality gaps or performance gaps, you know, in community to support, you know, some new um some new trend or some new technology trend. That would be great. Yeah, I I did actually list that latter point um in the primary responsibilities to kind of say you know we should be proactively looking for you know, new technologies and new projects in the in the ecosystem to present and 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 help with their initial qualification or just, you know, give them the information of what it takes to say, you know, join as a sandbox or whatever. Um, one thing I just realized I missed out was um, that, that I think we need to add to the primary responsibilities is um, it should be crystal clear that every incubating and graduated project should have a primary tag allocated. Um, there may be a bunch of secondaries, and that's fine, you know, because there are going to be a bunch of stakeholders. But but we really need to define a one-to-one -one mapping of each project to a tag um, if we are going to maintain any sort of delegation around the project lifecycle and reviews and whatever else. Yep. Tag contributor strategy. Your hand is up. Yeah, I was going to agree with Alex there, and it would be very useful to have that information recorded somewhere, um, uh, you know, have a grid or whatever it is. For one thing, I think we would find that some tags have a much higher project load than others, um, which which would eventually, when we have enough volunteers, probably lead to maybe splitting a tag. Um, the um, And, you know, on top of which, when other folks... Um, need to come in and say, okay, which tag do I talk to about this project? It would be really nice for them to actually know the answer to that without having to ask five people. So I'm I'm very plus one on on just and for some projects it's gonna be arbitrary, right? There are definitely projects that are like 50-50 between two tags, but we can make a decision and just, you know, assign them to one tag or the other, possibly partly based on workload. 
I think, um, I mean, we we can choose where we want to record it, but the new landscape has a way of allocating a label as to which tag it belongs to. And I think we need to go in and just do a bunch of PRs and populate those. I, I think it's awesome. It's more than just the PRs, the fact that there are a lot of folks in chat that are unfamiliar with the fact that that filter exists tells me that there's some education or awareness that needs to happen with the landscape. Um, and I know Brianna is working on this. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, so we just generally don't have a lot of visibility um, around what it's what it's happening um, there. So something that definitely needs to occur, but I think that's a, a separate conversation. Um, so what I'm hearing is we have some general understanding of like the basics of the tag, like core functionality is the gray areas that I think are really interesting here. So what what I want to do is like I kind of want to run through with with you all here what I've heard and, and make sure that we're all in agreement on a couple of these things that are just like bread and butter for each tag. The tags are SMEs and create a group to develop subject matter expertise within Cloud Native for that particular domain. Sounds about right. Yep. Um, they extend the expertise of the TOC. Um, they provide education to the community, to adopters, to projects to support adoption of Cloud Native and Cloud Computing concepts. Yeah. Yep. Um, some of those education opportunities are footholds for new contributors to enter the ecosystem to get a foundational understanding of this. Um, but it's not just education and white papers that do that. There are other opportunities that tags can serve as that front door to cloud native. Would that be a fair assessment? I see some head nods. Okay. Um, and then supporting a project's life cycle. I know, Alex, you had said supporting the project's life cycle, but I want to append that to say within the CNCF. Um, and, and here's my question to you all on that one is, should the tags be more engaged with projects with their life cycle, or should we kind of limit it? I know that we don't have a ton of contributors or members within these tags to be able to do that. Um, but should it just be restricted to the maturity levels and the moving levels process and providing support to them? Or, or should it be somewhere in between those two? Engagement directly with projects and their life cycle where the work is being performed in addition to providing that additional level of support on moving levels, reaching incubation status and reaching graduation status and then beyond. Is it worth distinguishing that? Katie, you came off mute. Yes. Um I think it should be somewhere in between because some of the tags, they are proactive and outreach as well. So I think there is like two separate kind of supports they can offer. One of them is for existing projects and perhaps guide them. And I emphasize the guiding um, verb here. And then the other type of outreach is for projects that would be a good fit for CNCF and they would invite them or perhaps like, again, guiding them towards uh, towards CNCF. So I think there's like two, so I, from what I can see, it's somewhere in between. Okay. Uh, unless we want to define the proactiveness in a completely different point. Yep. Uh, tag contributor strategy and then Karina. Um, yeah, actually speaking for tag contributor strategy here, particularly the projects moving levels working group, um, as we move towards adopting the new thing, the new checklists, it would be really helpful to have tags involved with some, certainly with some aspects, if not with more aspects, right? Because presumably the tags contain folks who are, have a lot of domain knowledge. So things like, they're a lot more prepared to evaluate things like the level of actual adoption of a project within that domain than people who don't have that domain knowledge. Um, so I think tags should be involved with the matriculation process, um, at, at each stage. Um, I, I don't know if they should be driving it, um, but I think that they should definitely be involved with the evaluation. Okay. Brina. Thank you. Um, so as we're talking about this, um, a couple of thoughts. One, yes, 
that the tag should be involved somehow, but keeping in mind, how are we making sure that tag um, chairs and tech leads are also avoiding burnout and then also cross tag um, collaboration. Um, so adding to Alex's list, um, how are each, how are the tags? Yeah, again, just collaborating and um, for example, if we have a project come through Tag App Delivery, as we have, like, you know, an invite Tag Network to come, you know, to the same meeting, or like, what are different ways that we can brainstorm um, more efficiency and awareness um, across the tags, um, while also, you know, scaling the TOC. Um, and then on top of that, how are we scaling the tags themselves? with, you know, the ambassadors or the other ideas that have come out recently. Um, but mm. back to the project oversight, um, it would be helpful to, at least for tech leads, to keep an eye on the roadmaps for the different projects. Um, that would be one area that would be helpful. And then um, I lost my other thought when I saw your hand go up. So go ahead, Alex, or sorry. <laughs> 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 I, so, so I was just going to say, um, to me, it's it's maybe a little bit more simplistic, and and I don't want to like um, underestimate like the cost of burnout and all the rest of it. But ultimately, there are a bunch of things that 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 have to be done per project, and the TOC is eleven members, and that hasn't changed despite the fact that the number of projects has skyrocketed and the number of sandbox projects, etc., has skyrocketed. So I think it, I think at, at, a, at a very start, we should be able to attempt to formalize some sort of process where if tags have the capacity, um, then allow TOC's li TOC liaisons to delegate certain parts of the work. You know, like if there's some due diligence work that needs to be done, or there is, you know, some 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 part of the project life cycle that that that, that an otherwise busy TOC member would have to do. Like, there's no harm in delegating it if there is a capacity to do that. And if there isn't a capacity to do that, then that in itself should be kind of like a flag that helps prioritize where we're trying to get resources going forward, right? Because because this kind of like builds the pipeline of of you know tech leads and co-chairs if they can be involved in those sort of things because i think you know lots of tag members join because they're interested in a particular initiative or they want to be seen to be you know helping the community in some way and they need to have an opportunity to do that white papers and some of the working groups and things like that are definitely one way of doing that but if they had an active role that the TSC was delegating to them, I think we might see more uptake. And if we don't, then, well, it's still a TSC responsibility and they're lumped with it. <laughs> Lynn and then Karina. Yeah, hi, this might be a crazy idea. I was just, uh, uh, after I hear you guys were talking about the issues uh, and improvements to the tag, I was thinking, you know, for the project, we have health check for the projects. I think it would be actually pretty cool to have uh, some metrics to measure the health of tag. Because uh, coming from the background of tag network, uh, which we, uh, which I know, you know, it would be good to kind of, uh, we've been trying to work hard to revive uh, tag network, you know, I have more energy. Uh, I think it would be good to have uh, like a health check uh, dashboard kind of with some metrics to measure the health of the tag. You know, do we need more tech need, uh, you know, is the current coach here, should we rotate some of the coach here out? You know, this would help us making uh, the right assessment to, to Alex, your point, to be able to fulfill some of the responsibilities you are proposing here, which I think many of them does make sense and resonate with me. Okay, Karina? So my, my other thought came back. Um, it was, uh, Alex, when you were talking about, and in the, the chat, um, kind of the, the working groups and the white papers that come out, 
um, it would be good to define as as the chat is saying, you know, when they're spun up, when they are spun down. And so the CNCF doesn't start looking stale, including the white papers, at least in tag app delivery. We've talked about, you know, doing um, a quarterly update, or, you know, a certain amount of time check on even the white papers or other deliverables that come out so that they are not stale and outdated as well. And when should they be archived also? So just some th more thoughts. Um, I want to point out real quick in chat, um, Josh had recommended a new discussion on health check for tag. Um, and I want to make sure that we're, we're clear that if we're going to go down that route, we have a very clear discussion on what are those metrics that we're going to measure against what it, how explicit are they, um, and how we can capture them. So lots of thoughts there. Yeah. Yeah, just to be fair, this is an idea from a couple of other folks, including Katie. I'm just, I was just thinking about how would we construct that. Um, mm -hmm. And there, there are some technical problems there. So I'm going to start a discussion thread so people can have ideas about how to work around this. Thanks. Um, and then Katie, you had mentioned as well, having a page where people can find open tag roles. It's, it's difficult um, to find what those are, or what's available, unless you're already in the ecosystem. But I want to tease that apart a little bit more because um, this has come up in repeated conversations, both with um, past TOC members as well as uh, new attendees at KubeCon, other folks that just reach out to me randomly on Slack and they're trying to make sense of this complex ecosystem is, is difficult to understand how you can get started in CNCF. Like there isn't mm -hmm. a clear front door. And I, I constantly recommend to folks, what's your background, what's your experience? Let's get you aligned in a tag and you can first show up and understand what it is that they're doing. But I feel like that's still a lot of heavy lift. There isn't a lot of um, focus in the tags for what it is that they're all accomplishing so that somebody can self-service and go there and see, I see all the tags. I see what they're working on. I can I can see myself having an impact. Chris, you said you have clotributor.dev. That is a horror, very difficult thing to pronounce. Clotributor.dev, which is alpha and can probably use that as a tag list for areas for folks to get involved. I love that idea. This is excellent. Um, but it looks like it's a little bit more focused on the projects and code specific potential contributors, not necessarily. Um, ah, thank you. Excellent. So looking to make changes to that to allow for um, more non coding contributors um, to have an impact and to understand how they can contribute to CNCF. So this is great. I'm happy to see this. Um, okay. Thanks, Rian. All right. So I've got a lot of really good notes. Um, we talk about collaboration with other groups in and out of the CNCF, both to ensure consistency on, on some of those. Thanks, Josh, for posting that discussion. Um, we also talked about cross-tag collaboration and ways we can brainstorm efficiency and awareness across the tags. I think part of that is what these monthly meetings with all of the tag leadership and technical leads is to identify areas for efficiency um, and awareness. So if you're working on something talk about it. We have um, the mailing list um, that we just started this go around around what are the tags working on? Um, where do you need help? What requests for support do you have? Um, I think that's helpful in driving that that efficiency or awareness and scaling the TOC because I can see everything that you all are working on and it's fantastic. Um, we Alex, you had also mentioned that some tags have specific functions, but not all of them. Uh, I'll get to you. Actually, Kathy, go ahead before I continue. Oh, okay. So, yeah, um, I'm thinking, you know, because uh, each tag uh, it has a specific 
specific technology domain, right? I think it would be great if we can connect the tags with the uh, end user tag. We have a user tag, right, since um, So if we can connect them, you know, I don't know whether there's any um, collaboration or communication between tags and, uh, and the end user tag. Uh, it would be great if those if they can be connected so that you know the tag can know you know what are the um, what are the gaps or the pain points the end users or challenges the end users are facing, and then the tags can work on that or can solicit you know new contributors or new projects or or initiate new projects to work on that something like that. So I want to make sure that I understand it. Um... You're talking about uh, collecting feedback from potential adopters so that the tags can identify areas of improvement or deltas and work to bring closure to those gaps. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay, I think that's something that the end user technical advisory council or committee um, would be beneficial to provide. And I know that's not something that we've discussed yet because that group is still being stood up. Um, but I think it's definitely a good note to have for when we engage with that end user TAC, um, end user technical advisory board, that's what it's, uh, engage with the tab so that this is on their radar and we can ensure that we're considering that um, for our discussion with the tags moving forward. So I've got that one recorded. Um, um, go ahead, Alex. On, on that point, it has been historically like ridiculously hard for tags to engage with anybody from the end user community. Um, like in the past, I think we did, we, we attempted to do, you know, a survey or try to get their feedback in some way to kind of more to sort of um, specify, look, what areas do you want us to prioritize? You know, if we are working on uh a white paper, what are your pain points that you want us to look at next? And if it's, it's sort of, you know, low single digit percentage response rates, it's it's very hard to to get that. And, and, and the secondary part of the problem is that if you open up end users to the tags and the tags get flooded but by vendors wanting to approach the end users, because like this is, you know, product market fit heaven for them. So, there, 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 there is that danger that, that you kind of alienate all the end users. So if if we had like some specific things that the TOC said, hey, uh, uh, end user board, you know, what are the top 10 things you want the tax to look at and, and ask them officially and formally and let them come up with a reply, that might be really useful. In, in, in order to say, these are the things we're going to look at next, and these are the projects we're going to target next for Sandbox and whatever. I think that's a good call out for the TOC as a, a part of that relationship with the end user tab is facilitating that relationship for the tags to advance that area um, for the end user ecosystem. I think that's a good call out, and I think that is something that we can very easily start defining within the TOC once we have that relationship established within the end user tab. Um, so yeah. I really like that one. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I like that too. I think, you know, um, the TOC can help with that. Mm -hmm. um, to the point around tags having specific functions, we talk about tag security, who does the security reviews. Um, we talk about tag contributor strategy, who performs governance reviews. Um, the governance reviews and Josh, you'll have to remind me, it's been a while since I entered it into the PR. Our governance reviews proposed in the new uh, mat matriculation yeah. process as a requirement. Yeah, I mean, because the new matriculation process, we've uh, put everything into a master checklist yep. of which governance is a segment. Um, the um, so is so is for that matter um, contributor activity at, at, um, at um, the um, and and that's actually why I was saying earlier looking to that why it would be very helpful to have the appropriate technical tag be involved in that process as well um, mm -hmm. because there are some things that are going to be easier for that tag to evaluate than really anyone else. Yep, I agree. 
Um, so we have those ones. And I know that Tag Environmental Sustainability has their green reviews uh, group um, who performs another reviewing function. What do other tags have a similar capability or a similar kind of um, consistency evaluation process for projects? Um, for example, API maturity. If you are an incubating or a graduated level project, we expect your APIs to have this level of performance or this minimum set of capabilities. Um, do we have things like that within the other tags? Um, speaking for storage, I, I don't know that we have any of those documented, for example, but that would be a good thing to have. I think it's kind of done intuitively based on the SMEs, but it's it's not written down. Karina? Uh, we have been talking about that and um, tag up delivery. So PSA for everybody on March 6th, we're talking about APIs and what they mean uh, within the tags or within CNCF um, and tag up delivery. Um, so that is one area that we are looking at and whether, you know, it makes sense to have a working group on APIs and whether they can assess API maturity. Because I, I can see these reviews as assisting projects in CNCF and um, meeting expectations or consistency of other projects so that if there's an adopter that comes to CNCF, they know <laughs> all of our APIs are going to hit this minimum bar. All of uh, the security expectations of all of our projects have are at this level so that they're very clear on what they're going to get when they're adopting and integrating cloud native projects in their development integration environments and eventually deploying out to production. Josh, you came off mute. Yeah, it's, just, it's a tangent issue, so I'm not gonna go. Okay. Um, so it sounds like we have a few of them, but not all of them. And that's fine, but identifying where those reviews can happen or where we can introduce uh, consistency for cloud native projects as they're moving levels, I think is important. Um, there was discussion in the chat and here as well as around working groups and the different kinds of working groups that exist. I know Josh and I have had many conversations on working groups um, and their, their length of duration or, or lack thereof. So it sounds like we have a need there to define both of those. Um, we also had specific areas that fold into the tags as well. Working groups can be used as a funnel for extending a tags function. Um, the TOC has been leveraging the existing tags to provide governance structure for working groups and new technical areas like the AI working group that exists um, for instance, so that we can determine whether or not it's viable, whether or not there's interest, if there's projects, um, and determine whether or not over time that there's enough interest in promoting from a working group into a tag. So leveraging that existing governance structure to help that is, is also one area. Um, we talked about identifying and overlapping identifying overlaps and gaps within cloud native. The tags are really well suited to do this within their specific domain. Um, and we also talked about alignment of existing cloud native projects and proposed cloud native projects to the specific tag, so Sandbox, um, for instance. What are they not? There were only three bullets, Alex, that you, you had listed there. Not project governance, but can support it and can provide guidance. Don't make decisions, make recommendations, and there's no king making. What else are tags not? I mean, if that's it, y'all y'all do a lot of things. <laughs> There's only three things that you don't do. Well, so the reason why I listed those bullets is is more is less about the bullets and, and and more about sort of clarifying, you know, any potential misinterpretation. Right, the the scope defines what we do. Um, but I didn't want at any point to be that there any ambiguity. So if, for example, we're helping work on a standard, that doesn't mean we're picking one project over another project. That should never happen. You know, if we're working on the due diligence for a project, we 
don't get to make a decision on whether our project goes to incubation. We make a recommendation and ultimately it's the TOC that has to make that decision. You know, so so those are kind of like a couple of clear things to sort of say, look, we could do some of those things based on the scope, but we don't go out of the lines kind of thing. Yep. Um, two other items that popped up in Slack or in the chat here is tags do not supply direct technical assistance to projects either. Um, but more importantly, they don't contribute to project code. I want to put an asterisk on that direct technical assistance because I do think that there are occasions where the subject matter expertise that exists within a given tag yeah, is yeah. necessary to support some of our projects and like understanding multi-tenancy, whether or not a proposal that they have um, against the project to introduce some of these security control mechanisms or changes, it actually will accomplish what they're intending to provide. And sometimes that subject matter expertise in performing that review is super beneficial and, and ensuring that they're on the right track. Um, so that'll need to be a little bit more uh, clarified, but definitely agree with not contributing code to projects. Um, this is super helpful. And we've got 15 minutes left. Um, so on to the gray areas. Duffy, you came off mute. I did. Why, why, was it, why would we limit our ability to contribute code to projects? So the I think it's worthwhile to call out that the tag itself doesn't necessarily do that, but the individual members might contribute code to the projects. Right, and I think, okay. I think part of that is to ensure that we're not positioning tags to create kings within the ecosystem. Um, Josh? Also to avoid having the projects have expectations that, you know, if they get stuck because they can't do something that they can come to the tag for anything beyond advice. The tag, uh, if the tag provides a, a, a template or, you know, a mechanism by which um, but that is adopted within the project. Would that be a code contribution from the tech, or would that be? Would that be outside of the scope? The um, yeah, I mean, first of all, again, individual members can do things, yeah. and and second, there's advice there's help with running the project itself versus making contributions directly to the project if you follow me and and um and it's more of a you know hey i'm in tag storage like i'm volunteering for tag storage am i expected to write code for storage projects on demand yeah. and the answer the to that is, no. is the expectation that i agree right and if it's a yeah. thing that, 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 that code should not come from the tag as a whole because that's absolutely on, on, on target. But, you know, I'm just, it just, I was, I was alarmed enough for a minute there when we were saying that like, we shouldn't contribute code. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, when you look at some of the work that security tag does and those sorts of things, I'm like, mm. yeah. Alex? I, I was going to say, like, there is one obvious exception to, the, to that particular rule which is when the tags or one of their working groups actually own or drive the project in the first place, which does sometimes happen, right? Yeah, and we have a repo and a process set up for that because those aren't, they're not necessarily cloud native projects that are going to apply to Sandbox. Sometimes um, they're proof of concept. Sometimes they're showcasing that you can't that you can interoperate or integrate different projects together to accomplish a solution that an adopter is actually looking for, like these five projects, string them all together, and then you get this. I can see that yeah. as an example to showcase the power of cloud native. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about, you know, where Tag Network um, had put together, like, you know, a, a bunch of them in a working group had put together, like a set of benchmarks, for example, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, that's, that's codes. Yeah. So this one I think needs to have very specific language associated with it. If we're going to include it. Um, and it's probably I mean, worth a discussion. I think 
I think we we can kind of sort out the legalese by simply saying tags don't don't uh, don't contribute code to contributed projects. If they actually own the project, then it's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still some more wordsmithing, but I think that's a good start. Um, and tags don't vote. Thank you, Ricardo, for adding that one there. Um, Go I ahead, Kathy. Alex, uh, yeah, so it, it, could you post your link, the link to the chat, you know, what you, what you have written on the text? Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I would like to um, comment on what Alex just mentioned about, you know, uh, if the if the a working group is working on a project or is initiating a project and that you know will fill some gaps of current uh, or solve a challenge in current cognitive um, field i think you know then you know they can contribute to the code right because they are initiating that project they own that project right alex is that what you mean yeah, as as I'm typing it, this is a minefield, right? So, so it just occurred to me that yes, tags should not provide code to contributed projects, but code for projects where the tag is the actual owner, that's fine. But then we also have a bunch of maintainers for various projects that actually sit in the tags, and you know, like we don't want to kind of create like a silly rule where a maintainer can't sit in a tag because that means they can't donate to a project then, you know. So, so I think we need to be a bit more practical here. I think this is one of those things where the guideline more than a rule. Yeah, uh, Duffy had a suggestion is there is no expectation that tags will provide code. I think that's a, yeah. a good way of framing it. Um, all right, so gray areas. I know we have nine minutes left, but I, I wanna kind of Touch on one of them, uh, defining and influencing standards and converging around common goals. I think that this is important and it's something that shakes out as a result of providing that education and that subject matter expertise is naturally tags are going to be positioned to provide influence over standards or specifications or set the framework for them to exist within cloud native so that projects can develop against them so that our adopters have consistency in what they expect from cloud native projects. This is um, in my mind a little bit around like how we accept pro specifications as projects within cloud native but require a reference implementation of them. Those are all examples of us starting to go down that path. Now, CNCF is not a standards making body. That is not what we do, but we certainly have sway and influence over standards that may develop within industry as a result of cloud native projects. And I think it's important that we capture this as part of the, like education awareness and advancing the technical domain, but also need to be clear in that we are not king making in this space. What do others feel about that? I see some head nods. Marina. Yeah, I think that the, the word standard here, I think, is very tricky because I think that has a very specific technical meaning of like there's a group that like, you know, says that the standard is correct. But I do think that this idea of creating best practices that are then used by other groups to make standards, I think, is definitely a role that at least we in tax security have had. I think some people who have contributed to the tax security white papers have then been asked by other actual standards bodies to then use that expertise. Um, across there. So I think this is definitely like a role that tags can play, but I think not actually in writing standards, but more in like making those best practices, making those ideas that then become the actual standards. Yep. Completely agree. Excellent. Um, and Kevin, why don't you come off mute, Kevin? <laughs> I'll let you read your comment. Uh, I don't know that your mic is working. Hello. Ah, hello. There we go. Yeah, uh, I'm just uh, thinking about maybe we can make you more use of the uh, pro project uh, due diligence uh, 
document because we uh, uh, we used to uh, put a lot of effort on that, right? Uh, including the tag uh, tag uh, members as well as the TOC members, and uh, I feel that uh, the uh, the DD document uh, contain a lot of uh, kind of expectation, understanding about the uh, project maturity. And uh, 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 to my understanding, previously we are kind of ma uh, uh, making it use kind of all, uh, more among the, uh, you know, the tech members and the TOC members. Maybe we can uh, kind of uh, let more people know about it. If uh, someone is kind of uh, evaluating the project, read through the DD document and they can get a kind of uh, overview from a lot of uh, different uh, aspects about the project the maturity. Yeah. Yeah, we, it seems like we create due diligence documents for the for the TOC to get an understanding and to express that publicly, but I don't know that we actively use them once they're once they're done and the vote has been made so i'm wondering if there's a potential for reuse of that content so that it's not wasted effort mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. karina um so when the new toc um approves the project moving levels the the new templates i wonder if with the the one template like if it can be linked into the card for each project within the landscape that way there's just a common way for people to come in and then can automatically go and look at you know the history of the projects as they're moving levels and the due diligence docs because that was a great point you brought up kevin that's that's a interesting coincidence um uh, from a suggestion this that was actually something that we had talked about with uh I think it was the LFX team. They were working on a project health dashboard that provides better visibility into like project health and maturity as it changes over time. And one of the requests that we had with them is linking the DD into that. Um, but it also sounds like providing that link out um, from the landscape into that kind of like project health page to show the project's uh, improvements and, and progress over time, I think would be beneficial too. Um, Ricardo, you had a question around, are we starting a working doc? Are we going to collaborate on this to finalize the additions and the changes? Um, I'm going to say no now. And the reason why is I wanted to collect all of the information from the tags because we have been talking about this for several cube cons, I feel like. Um, I know we have two a year, but we've had these conversations ongoing for a while and I want to draw a line so that the TOC can make a decision with input from the tags and provide that recommendation back out for a public comment on the tags. Um, I think we have a lot of good information um, within both the TOC and just from this meeting alone. Um, we're going to take this to the TOC offsite. We do have an agenda item specifically to talk about this. My goal as part of that is to provide a concrete list of actions or changes that we're going to propose back out to the tags for a public comment period. Um, and then from there, we should be able to finalize and move forward. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. Very good. Excited. Yeah, sounds good. It's, 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 it's kind of like we have your typical new manager syndrome where somebody has been promoted to lead the team and they need to figure out how to delegate to their team members in order to actually be efficient. And we haven't done that bit yet. Nope, not yet. Working on it though. <laughs> All right, um, we have three minutes left. I'm going to open it up to any questions that anybody may have before we end the call. And just some quick notes. Lynn Sun and Kevin Wang are now on the TOC. Welcome, welcome. And uh, the election, where are we at? Qualification period is open for TOC nominated seats. So TOC members, if you haven't done it yet, please go through and complete the qualification. Once that's done, we can get the ballot sent out because right now we are currently short one TOC member. So we're technically down to 10. <laughs> no pressure. Questions? All right, uh, TOC members, we have a lot of work before us and we're gonna have a very, very busy offsite.
Thanks everyone for joining the call today. And I wish you all a happy Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, George, for Thank running you. the slides. Bye. Thanks. Bye.